All uh, right, Tau Fleeter Musketeers. We're gonna try something a little different here. This is uh, again from War Wolf Ordnance. They call it a Super Defender Heavy Defense Load. It's a one and an eighth ounce pumpkin ball with six double lot buckshot pellets. Guaranteed to be painful for the shooter. Absolutely. <laughs> I would not want to get hit by that. Yep. It's for dangerous game and tactical defense situations. So we're going to try it at a uh, defense range here at about, what, 19 yards? Yes. I think you can hit Doug at that range, though. Not close enough. <laughs> I'm ready when you are. All right, we're going to go for Cowboy's hat there. Wow! Jeez! See, with that barrel we had no rear sight, so elevation was subjective. But I was aiming about here. Okay. And we hit just maybe three inches, two and a half inches higher. Okay. But you can tell the main impact in this double lot here, here, here. Not sure if that one was there. I don't think it was. That's a that looks like a fresh hole there. Yeah. One here, two, three. So we had four, pretty five, pretty tight grouping, actually. You know. Six. All right. Let's see what happens when you launch nearly two ounces of lead at a target of at around ten yards. Now we saw a lot of spread with the double odd buck, but the one and an eighth ounce round ball pretty much hit dead center. Now two ounces of lead packs an enormous amount of recoil and these are traveling around 1250 feet per second. We're going to go through the full rifled barrel and see how this affects the spread. It might be interesting. See when we hit one of those vehicles out there three and a half miles away. Yeah, people think uh, shotguns shoot three and a half miles because they can and do that in Call of Duty, I guess. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's got a thump to it. Pretty accurate? Fairly accurate. Yeah, it's pretty much center. I thought pretty, you hit it really high for some reason. Pretty much my point of aim there. But man, I don't see any from the buckshot, so I don't know. We'll see on the slow mo if they all hit here or if the buckshot went around. Yeah, that's odd. But yeah. You might need a little more distance from the spread, maybe. Here's our exit. Now I found this rather interesting uh, and it's a little comical too. We had an enormous spread because of that rifled barrel of the six double odd buck pellets. However, the one and eighth ounce round ball continued on. It had good spin too, but look at the back of that uh, round ball. You can see the big craters in it from the uh, double odd buck slamming into the back of it. So we had roughly 24 inches or more of spread with that double lot buck. And what application would you use that for? The only thing I can think of is this scenario. Okay, we're now uh, about 20 yards away. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> All right, cool. main slug or the ball the hit here. Looks like one of the buckshots hit here. And there's one more right here. Okay. So it's starting to show a little spread there. Yes. But, uh, exit wound. Ah, yes. That's pretty nasty. And look at this here on the table. Yeah, some shrapnel came out. But, uh, that's probably from the front side. But there's one here stuck in that table. <laughs> Poor table, garage sale table. There we go. Yeah, still has the paint on it. Well, Danny had no problem hitting that cylinder at around 20 yards. 
but we see just three double odd buck flying loose there. Those are probably the back ones. The t three forward ones are kind of stuck to the round ball. But it looks like a couple of them finally broke away right before impact. Now this could probably be alleviated or minimized by using maybe like an overshot card, just a like a wadding between the double odd buck and the round ball, or by using a buffer, which is just like ground up styrene plastic, which kind of acts like packing peanuts to kind of uh, absorb the energy and prevent the payload from being slammed into each other. Danny's new lead plate. It's 25 pounds. <laughs> it's incredibly thick. Uh, we're still at about 20 yards. Right at 20. All right, that's how it was sitting on the table there. Looks like the main ball hit the top. Okay. And then we got one of the buckshots. I think you were trying to avoid not hitting my table, so. Yeah, that and uh, that thing having nothing but a front bead sight. Yeah. But uh, one buckshot and it's still stuck in there. All right, it's become part of the plate. Add to the weight, well, it might make up for what we blew off here. Yeah. That was a virgin lead plate. Oh, that's a nice one. First time around. Very thick. It's like an inch and a half thick. 25 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> okay, put that down before you have a hernia. Uh. Now, I really think Danny was just aiming a little bit high to try to avoid damaging our table. Uh, but still, we, this shot we had pretty good grouping. Now, that's a pretty small target for this type of projectile at that range. But people like to see the lead plate. So there you go. Okay, now we're going to shoot an AR-500 plate with a pressurized bottle next to it. About, what, 10 to 12 yards? Yes, not very far, but just to give you an idea of the spalling plate. that occurs when you hit a steel plate. Okay, the plate is angled, so it'll deflect everything to the left of us. What we got? Wow! We definitely hit the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where, but we'll Not see on high speed. Where. It looks like maybe something here, but yeah, something hit it hard. But look at this bottle. It sheared that bottle. It's molten lead. Yeah, a little silver. Burns all over. High here. velocity fragments, very small fragments. We moved the target back to around 10 yards away on this shot. And we had pretty controlled spread, nothing too wide, nothing too narrow, but still we had a, maybe a couple double lot buck still stuck to that big round ball. Now, out of all these shots, I think we had one good chronograph reading, that was around 1,250 feet per second. And really, the errors were not caused by the chronograph being too close and you're capturing smoke and the muzzle flash. It was just because we were shooting all these multiple projectiles over the chronograph. So the one good reading that we got was when we actually moved the chronograph closer to the barrel of the shotgun. Well there you have it, the Warwolf Ordnance Super Defender shotgun round. Now they didn't cheap out on the packaging or the loading components, they used quality stuff when they put these things together. Now if you like really heavy loads and a lot of recoil and a lot of energy, these may just be the round for you. Now I have a link in the description to Warwolf Ordnance. Check them out, they have got a lot of unusual specialty shotgun rounds. And as always we want to thank our Patreon supporters. We are up to almost 700 supporters now. We're getting them there slowly and we really appreciate your support. And if you don't want to support us financially or if you can't afford it, hey, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But there are some smaller channels out there, especially the ones with fewer than a thousand subscribers who can't even monetize their videos and offset some of the costs to produce videos now. So take the time and, you know, if, if a channel that you watch, a smaller channel, is asking for Patreon support, you know, they probably really need it. 
And I often watch a lot of the smaller channels because they're just a little more friendly, they more apt to reply to comments and all that, and you can really relate to them on a personal level. Now on my Patreon page, I finally started doing something that I should have been doing the whole time, and that was just doing some little simple giveaways. Recently we gave away a, a, one of the titanium shotgun slugs to a Patreon supporter. And this is something I probably should do more often as well. It, I, I just have my head up my butt because I'm juggling so many things right now. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.